time for the next talk. So we will have Sebastian Lego um, presenting how to contribute to LVM. And so Sebastian is one of the uh, DBN developers like helping to, to, to do the release management, for, like the packaging of LVM. He does regular package builds of all the DBN uh, software. And he's very active on the mailing list. And yeah, he will give, he will kind of explain you how you sneak into the LVM community and then uh, place your first patches. Thank you. So who here, who here never contributed any patches to LLVM? Oh, right, cool. I won't be talking for nothing. So first I'm going to add a li uh, to speak about the license. It's not about trolling, uh, as some people said previously. We have some discussion with the DCC folks. Uh, so basically, currently, all the code in LLVM are published under the University of Illinois uh, open source license. It's kind of PhD license. Uh, some of them are also published under the uh, MIT license, as a dual license, and we don't do copyright assignment. I'm not the one who put that, it's Renato, basically for trolling, who asked me to ask this last time. Uh, some statistics uh, on LVM. So, uh, in, uh, in the history of LVM, we have 379 contributors who did some codes. We, we just crossed on all LVM, by, uh, all LVM project, we just crossed the 200,000 barrier last week. Uh, as you can see here on the schema, the growing is continuous over the year and the number of contributors is increasing a lot during the last few years. Uh, the statistics are from the OLO project. <coughs> and for Clang, the same, we have pretty much the same thing, except that the com commit per month are remaining the same, probably because the standard, the C and the C++ standard are not evolving much. And, uh, but the number of contributors is increasing a lot around the year. So we have around 60 contributors. And if you look at the last 30 days, we have 70 contributors, including three new ones. And over the last year, we had 176 contributors, which is uh, 34 more than during the last 32 months. So the project is going very well, and we have new people coming all the time, and new corporation, new company, and new researcher involved in the project. Uh, when I, sta I started myself to be involved in the LLV community because I wanted to try Clang. I didn't care about LLVM at all, but uh, I was very interested by a new C++ C++ compiler. So I went to see in Debian the state of the packet and I saw that they were not maintained for a while. So I started to maintain Clang and I noticed that when you want to package Clang, you need to package LLVM. So I started to package LLVM and I needed to forward some patches. And one of the first patches that I forwarded to the main English was the Earl support. Uh, as many of you know, the Earl uh, kernel is supporting on Debian, but they don't have much user. So I was expecting an answer like, no, we don't want this crappy patch. But they applied it in within two hours. And I received an email from one guy from Apple in private telling me, oh, it's very cool to see some folks porting LLVM on other architecture. So I was very surprised because I was expecting a project driven initially by Apple to be very reluctant to this kind of patches. And I also did the K3BSD patches and support. So I was very surprised to see that the answer from the community was very good. So I, I consider the, friend, the community as very friendly. Uh, it's mainly professional. We have some researchers, some academics like Tobias and a few others, like Bruno, who is taking care of the video right now, who are involved in the project. But many people are professional, like Renato. Uh, we have Apple, Google, ARM, Arrow, Intel, and plenty of other folks. You can have a look on the Git lo on the SVN log. It's very interesting to see how many co various corporations are involved in the project. And usually, when you ask some question, even if they are stupid, like I send a few one, uh, you are, you get some answer on the main English. It's it's always the same people, but they are very very friendly and answering very fast to the questions that you might have. So the mailing list, so I'm only talking during the next few slides on LLVM and Clang. We have something like 13 other projects, but I won't detail all of them. So in LLVM, we have two mailing lists, which are very high traffic, which are starting to be very hard to follow these days. At the beginning of the project, it was easier. Now it is get, getting harder and harder to follow all discussion. And in Clang, we have one more mailing list, which is for user. I'm not following this one. I don't know if there is much activities, but uh, it's a mailing list which started something like one year ago. <laughs> and you can find plenty of other mailing lists for the project, like uh, the debugger LLDB, if you want. So in the project, we are still using some version. Don't ask me why. But you can find some Git mirror if you want to uh, have a better version control system. 
And once you get the permission on the project, you get permission on every project of LLVM, even the website. So if you want, if you get a plus W permission on the SVN repository, you can modify LLVM.org. It doesn't matter. So obviously, we don't do this kind of mistake by changing the website to use <coughs> advertisement on, on this, but you can do that if you want. Uh, so it's basic stuff here, how you can make a patch. Uh, so we are, it sounds obvious, but some people are writing patches against uh, the packaging in their distribution. So you have, when you want to write a patch, you have, you have obviously to do it against the trunk. You have to use SVND for diff-u. Uh, you have to uh, have unitary tested or non regression test if you fix a bug. Uh, sometimes it's not possible, so you have to explain why it's not possible. And you have to pass the whole test suite. So for this item, uh, it is uh, something which uh, remains to be discussed. So I asked Tobias and Renato to review my slide, and during the night they sent something like seven emails discussing this item. <laughs> so for now it's not a requirement, but it might become in the, in the next release. And when relevant, and I'm the one who has that because nobody is doing it, please update the release note when you are doing some contribution in LLVM. Because most of the developers, they don't care. So we have to review the Git log after that to understand what changes have been done. So the review process. So we have various ways to do the review in LLVM. So uh, it is documented on the URL that you have on the top. For minor patches, you can commit directly without any review. So it's basically typo or minor fix and so on. Uh, for non-regular contributors, you can also send emails on the various mailing lists, so people will, will review it in the kernel way. And we, we don't do private reviews. Everything is going on the mailing list. So if you want to contribute a patch, basically you send it on the mailing list, you wait for a reviewer, and they are going to address your comment or tell you straight uh, LGFM, which means looks good for me, and you can commit the patch. If it is not good, you, you do the fix and you uh, send an email again and so on. Uh, if you have the permission to commit, you send it yourself. If not, you just send the you just uh, answer to the email who goes for me. Can you apply this for me? And that usually goes very fast. Uh, that sounds trivial uh, comment and uh, and things, but it's really important to, uh, <coughs> to say them when you want to contribute to the project like LLVM and Clang. Uh, you should make the patch as small as possible and usually atomic in terms of features. One patch is one feature. And uh, if you have unrelated fix, you have to split them into multiple patches. Uh, like any project, we prefer to split. We don't mind the number of commits uh, going in the project. And uh, when you want to get a review, you have to CC the possible reviewer to get that. Uh, you do git blame or SVN, I don't remember the command. And, uh, and you can also look at what we call in the project code owner, the people who, who are in charge of some part of the code. So if you want some uh, approval from uh, optimization, you can send an email to Renato if you want some information about Poly, Tobias, and so on. So everything is documented. And there is a file which lists all the code owner. Uh, we have some informal rule about uh, pinging people in the project. So if you send a patch and nobody is answering it to you because the patch is, is only interesting to you or some very weird architecture, uh, it's common that you don't get any answer. So you just have to wait for seven to five days to ping <laughs> on the mailing list saying, can someone have a, a look to my patch? And don't forget to uh, rebase it to the trunk. And one advice also is to get yourself known, so don't hesitate to do some simple bug fixes or some improvement of the code or some better documentation to make yourself known. Because if you are known in the project, people are more willing to help you to uh, get your patch applied. Uh, about review, so some of us are doing some patch review. Uh, you don't need to be the code owner of the specific part um, for the patch you are re reviewing. You just uh, <coughs> can review any patch if you want. Um, you can um, you can say, look do to me if you are not really a specialist of this part. And um, so the, uh, the interest for yourself to review patches is you have more chance to see your patches applied after that by other people. 
So the, about the large project, so one interesting example about the large project thing is that uh, the, open MP, uh, the OpenMP folks at Intel in Russia, they just release OpenMP runtime library and it's a huge part of code. It's a runtime that they're using in the Intel compiler and they are giving it to the LLVM community. Besides that, they also wrote some changes in Clang to get the OpenMP support finally in Clang. But this patch is huge and they, uh, they obviously won't be able to make it at once. So what they are currently doing with the community is splitting the, patches, the patch into smaller pieces to get that review. So it is, this one is a good example of what you should not do because they are doing some refactoring because people are not always happy about what is going on. So it's very important to, when you want to do a large patch to start from the beginning to discuss with the community because otherwise you are pretty sure that you will have to rewrite many things to the project. So get in touch with the community uh, very quickly. It really helps when you want to get some bigger patches into the archive. So, so the review system, what we are using is Ar Arcanist and Fabricator, which are tools which were initially developed by Facebook. Uh, the guy who developed that at Facebook, I think they left the company to develop only the software, which is now used by plenty of corporations. Uh, so for now we have this. The code review is available on this URL. I hope at some point it will become an official uh, service of the project with LLVM.org and not, not the Chandler URLs. So here is uh, a change. I took one of mine. So basically, uh, in this patch, I found a bug. So in, when we are building uh, Clang, in, when we are using Clang into the CH root, if slash proc is non pointed we had some bugs. So I fixed that bug and I improved the detection code of uh, the Clang path. So you can see here that I'm a author. Raphael, who is one of the biggest contributors of the project, was a reviewer. And, um, and so I didn't provide any data. Uh, you need test here, just like was pretty. To do that, you have to create a CH root and disable some feature. And on the bottom, you have access to the original code and the new one. And you can see that Raphael here uh, asked me why I added an extra white space, which was a mistake from my side, so I fixed that in the commit. So it's very similar to uh, Gerrit for those who are familiar, except that in this case, we have Anarchist, which is uh, a CLI tool which uh, enable you to interact with Fabricator. So it's built on top of Git and Mercurial and SVN also, forgot to mention that. And you can interact with this tool to uh, get your patches approved, applied and so on. You can see the diff. It's quite powerful and it's working pretty well. But it's just done in PHP, so if you don't like PHP, <laughs> you never notice that it was PHP. No. So to get the plus W permission on the project, so after you get a few patches applied, you, um, you send an email to Chris Ladner, who, who is uh, the founder of the project, who is still very involved, and he is now the head of developer tools at Apple. You send an email with your username, uh, what kind of uh, email address you want, and what name you, what name you want to be displayed, because we are using SVN, so in SVN it's login only and the password share hash, you send it to Chris Latner. So in my case, I send the request at 3.15 uh, 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 and I receive the permission to uh, commit uh, seven hours ago. So that makes the project very fast to uh, accept new contributors and it's very quick. So usually when we see people sending some interesting patches, we accept the patches and after a few commits, we say to them, oh, you should just apply for the permission on the Git repository, on the SVN repository. It is very easy to get, so we are very pushing people to get the account because it really helps to get new contributors and very easy. So I'm not telling about GCC when I say that because I'm a strong user of GCC and I'm using it on a daily basis. But I found that very, very easy to contribute unlike GCC where you have to send a, um, a copyright assignment and so on. And uh, it's not about trolling, I just find sad that you have to send some legal paper. It takes some time to be processed. Well, as you can see here, in eight hours, seven hours, I was able to uh, have access to every LLVM project with just sending a few minor patches into the project. So it's very good for, the, for um, welcoming new contributors. So I won't go into the details, but we have coding standards. They are all detailed here. So we define uh, in the standard how you manage headers, what the naming of the method should be, what you can and cannot use in C++. For example, uh, I'll discuss that this morning, but we are not using RTTI or exception in the project. 
and uh, we just switch doing the after the 3.4 release to C11. So now if you want to compile the LLVM toolchain, you need TCC 4.8 or Clang itself to be able to build your project. 4.7. So 4.7, yeah. it's not working with every project. With LDB, it's failing. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. So uh, I'm using 4.8. I'm not the only one who has a problem or something. Mm. So some ideas if you want to contribute. So in uh, on LLVM, we have open projects. On Clang, we have the same, so I won't go into the details, just, just go on the URL. If you are a student, uh, we are applying every year for the TSOC, for the Google Summer of Code, so we have project. Uh, as you probably know, compilers are not very always easy, so it might be tricky to find a project which matches your skill. And besides that, we have plenty of other projects. So we have Poly, Tobias is going to talk about that. We have LLDB, which is uh, a great debugger. So it enables you to do some very interesting uh, um, print of the stack trace in C++, evaluation on uh, life because it's based on Clang. So it's a very powerful project. We can use LLDB. It's more, for now, I think, a proof of concept. It's not very usable on Linux devices. Uh, but you can have a look. And it will I will be very <coughs> happy to package that in Debian when it reaches a good state. Uh, compiler RFT and uh, libc++ which is already in Debian and you can already use it to, uh, if you want to uh, build C++ code based on another runtime library and libcd C++. Uh, we have also a bug tracker. I'm not very happy about the quality of the bug tracker because, because some, pat some bugs are reported on the Apple bug tracker. Uh, many developers don't really care about the bug tracker, so uh, you will find plenty of bugs which are already fixed. Uh, I think we should, need, we will need someone at some point to do some huge cleanup in the bug tracker. Uh, we are doing the same as uh, Jan Simon show for the kernel previously. We are rebuilding uh, twice a day uh, the whole LLVM toolchain with Canvas, which is a Clang static analyzer, and we have almost 300 errors which are detected. Some of them are false positive, but there are about 100 super easy patches to write which are dead assignments, so it's basically some uh, assignments which are useless. So if you want to start those three ones, so almost 200 uh, errors are very easy to fix and we will be very happy to apply them in the project to improve the quality of the base code. But it's a very good number, 300. If you can come to try on, a B on other projects similar in terms of size, you will find many more errors. So I'll, I'm speaking super fast, but uh, I'm leaving some time for question or discussion. Well, I'm not a very uh, deep developer in LLVM and Clang, but I know that some people in the room are. So if you have questions on deeper aspect and so on, don't hesitate. Well, I think I have one. Yeah. Uh, you said that by getting a few simple patches uh, accepted, you actually have the rights to apply for the right access to the whole repository. Yeah. Don't, doesn't it sound a bit risky to do that? For now, we did not have any issue, but every people are, are watching the patches which are sent. And ev for every modification in the project, we receive email and people are reading the changes. Mm -hmm. And we have a huge unitary test suite, so I don't see yeah. any issue. I think the build bots help a lot with yeah. this. And um, there is a uh, pre-commit review and post-commit review, and there's a lot of people doing post-commit review. Uh -huh. So I see. If, if you do something silly, they will revert your patch and remove your rights. Okay. You know, they act on a reactive basis rather than proactive basis. Okay, yeah. I understand. So we have no problem with the, uh, no, no, enforcing the culture of, uh, uh, in the coding and the commenting. I see. All right. Yeah. 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 Um, I had a question about the actually the documentation because so I spotted an issue in the documentation a while ago, but I wasn't really sure who to speak to about it. Cause I looked at the blame and the, the original source of the documentation was when you moved from the old documentation to Sphinx. We mm -hmm. had a massive commit, so I don't really know who to speak to about this. <laughs> so I put an email up, but I didn't really hear anything. But if you could suggest who I could speak to, yeah. it's better to send the patch. I, mean, I, I thought about it, but I wasn't quite sure how to patch it, so to put the LLVM lit, like, you know, the substitution variables you can use. Uh, like, it seems a little out of date for some of them you don't exist anymore. Right. As far as I can tell. I mean, I can write a patch if you want. Is that the better way? Oh, yeah, yeah, do it. Right, ok
but just send the patch out to the mailing list. Maybe CC him, and even if he doesn't reply, like it will be on the mailing list. And yeah, again, somebody will see. Someone will see what, it. What was the name of that guy? Sorry? Daniel Dunbar. Oh, oh yeah, yes. You know him. Yeah. And yeah, if nobody replies, just ping it a week later after. And at least after the second ping, like there will be someone. But he always reply. Yeah, yeah he's normally he's he's he does. Yeah. In the end, it will take a few days. Yeah. 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 I'm not aware of that many forks and uh, for in the case of us, as you know, it is mainly to get the people who did some changes in LVM to uh, improve the patches and provide some unitary tests to make them applied. But usually these kind of patches are, are quickly applied if they make sense. Yeah. And I know that there is some issue in the case of first on some specific... I'm seeing, I'm seeing LLVM embedded in many, many other systems that I use, so I'm going to do something to bridge them. Also, as we, maybe it's our fault, it's embedding its own copy, not linking to libraries or whatever. Mm -hmm. I think it's a, every popular library has this issue at some point. That people are embedding them because they want to do some changes and they don't want to bother about getting the, pi the patches applied upstream. It's mainly how you can explain to people the right way to do, the, to do it, but it takes time and it's hard. So LVM has like one line, but basically LVM is developed very rapidly and there's no guarantees on any library's bindings, mm -hmm. except the C bindings. So this is kind of a, yeah, it's an encouragement for everyone to actually follow the latest version because it doesn't take very long and then your code doesn't compile with the older versions. <laughs> so. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned this earlier, but um, somewhat, did you have uh, more insights about the, the, the contributions that uh, you've made to LVM uh, by building uh, Debian with it. Yeah. Uh, what sort of improvements has that brought back to LVM? Support for more code or? So, for example, one of the things that uh, one of the dis recent discussions that I started is uh, the usage of dash uh, f in cl in uh, GCC is widely uh, spawned. So you have plenty of packages which are using this kind of option, but many of them are deprecated and doesn't mean anything. For example, one of them is uh, force use the usage of e UTF-8. So it is a case by default in Clang. So f in this case, I'm pushing that into a Clang to make sure that we don't uh, trigger an error in this case, because it's not an error, it's just basically uh, uh, an option that we, I we should ignore. So I'm trying step by step to uh, improve the compatibility with GCC. And also I found some bug in Clang thanks to the rebuild and so on. So I can talk about that for one hour, but <laughs> it's not the purpose of that. <laughs> That's why Clang, when Jan Simon was saying that the Clang returns true, even yeah. if it's unsupported. Yeah. It, that's why it happened. Is because some of the flags were just by default. The oh, yeah, default this is because some some flag which are not understood by Clang are feeding yeah. in the world. No, it's not exactly the same. In Clang, yeah. in some version, we had some stupid thing like uh, when we had some uh, useless argument, for example, dash uppercase e. I, sorry, uh, yeah. it was uh, useless most of the time, some of the inclusion paths, and the claim was failing because the arguments were useless, and oh. it was, it was big shading, it's not very important to trigger an error in this case. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you want to, to have some information about the kind of error that you can find, you go on claim.debian.net and you will find uh, the 30 or 40 most common errors that we are finding with that. We have the same problem as VLAs. I mean, about 10 projects in the Debian archive are using VLAs, the variable length array. So for those one, I'm not fixing them. But uh, some other I'm fixing upstreams. Sometimes I fix GCC, sometimes I fix Clang. It really depends on the issue. And if you want to contribute, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> 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 I'm not yeah. kidding. <laughs> I, have yeah. a question. I have no computer background, but uh, I'm Me wondering, do, have, do you have <laughs> any uh, special requirements for the Google Summer of Code? Uh, it depends on the project. Uh, Clank. Sorry? Clank, LLVM, the... No, I mean, it's deep, uh, we are going to publish some project on the oh, LLVM website, and you just have to go on the website and see if your skill matches the project. Uh -huh. 
it really depends who is going to submit some project and what. For example, I might submit a project which will be improve uh, GCC and claim compatibility. In this case, it will be managing uh, argu command line arguments. So it is a very easy project. It mm -hmm. takes time, but it's quite easy. So you don't need to be a specialist like Renato or Tobias in compilation. Okay. I'm so it really depends on the project uh, which people are submitting. Yeah. One thing to add, I think, um, I think for LVM it's very very easy got to get a summer of code mm -hmm. in some way. So, like, w basically, if you start three or four weeks before the summer of code, to actually actively work with the developers to, to develop mm -hmm. your proposal, to um, like actually submit patches, maybe start coding at least, like just get into the community. So I say, like, this is a significant amount of work, but pe all basically all students that did that, mm -hmm. there is a very high success chance to succeed to get a sum of code. It's never guaranteed, uh -huh. yeah, but um, on the other side, like people not getting involved in their community before, just writing up a proposal, having a nice CV, it's very, very hard to, to actually get people to, to support your sum of code and mm -hmm. to actually mentor you. Because like one of the things is like most of the developers at LVM are professional, uh -huh. so they do not have a lot of time to, to actually spend mentoring. So if you cannot convince during the four weeks someone to actually mentor you, mm -hmm. um, it will be a lot harder. I see. On the other side, if you have some of the core developer, developers supporting you, mm -hmm. and this basically means you, you discuss your project, project idea, you basically have the project set up on the mailing list, discuss with the people uh -huh. the direction you want to go, you maybe start with like one or two tiny trivial features just mm -hmm. to show you can compile OVM, you can create a patch, you can go through a patch review b without being, being like afraid of like discussing with the people addressing the concerns, uh -huh. I think it's, it's very, very likely that, that you have a good proposal. I see. Thank you. Yeah. So I think we are kind of over. Uh, thanks, yeah. Sylvester, for the nice talk. Thank and you. Yeah, like, thank you.